Here are the five worst drummer musical habits that drive bandmates nuts. Make sure you're not guilty of any of these. Hey, welcome to the non-glamorous drummer. I believe that anyone can master the drums and conquer the instrument when they're armed with the right know-how. And I believe this video is gonna help you do just that. Also check out my free e-guide below about how to learn any song in under an hour without consulting drum tabs or other tutorials online. Now these five points aren't in any particular order because I believe they can all equally wreak havoc on a band. And so they're all well worth uh, noticing and correcting in your playing. What's cool though, is that there's honestly one core root overarching tip and mindset that will fix all of these if you employ that mindset. So I'm gonna share with you that at the end. I want you to be guessing what that is. What's the one thing you can do as a drummer that solves all of this? So here we go. We're gonna start with the obvious one first because it must be said. Number five, playing too loud all the time. So we all know that you've gotta to play to the room and you've gotta play for the song. You've gotta do your best to find that balance between playing what the song needs but playing what sounds right in the room. But the additional point here, the additional thing we've gotta keep in mind with playing for the room is we've gotta play according to the level the rest of the band is gonna be at in the house. And so if the front of house guy is mixing the band really loud, like 105 dB in the room, that's really loud, then you as a drummer can play pretty loud. You can be playing rim shots, you can hit cymbals without any drum shield up, and that's probably gonna be just fine, even if it's a pretty small room, because that's very loud. But let's say the sound guy's mixing things at like 85 dB or 83. Well, that's a big difference, and if there's not a shield in front of you, you're gonna have to play much more quietly. Uh, because just all the mics are not as hot and the levels in the room are lower. And so you don't want to be the drummer that sticks out like a sore thrum. thrum. <laughs> and so you don't want to be the drummer that sticks out like a sore thumb. You don't want to be the, the instrument that's heard the most. You've got to balance. And so be listening to what's going on around you. Make sure you're staying quiet enough to not be the loudest. But honestly, the best tip for this and how to make sure you do balance well in a big, on a big stage scenario where there's somebody mixing, just have conversations with the front of house guy. Talk to the sound guy, say, hey, am I too loud? Are my cymbals too loud? Is my snare too loud? Or is my snare cutting enough? Do I need to hit the snare louder? How's the kick volume? So have these conversations so that you can get really good, accurate feedback because you can't hear what the sound guy's hearing. You can't hear how you sound out there in the house. And so make sure you're balancing well with everybody else. Develop a good relationship with the sound guy, that helps. All right, bad musical drummer habit number four, not thoroughly learning the songs. Nothing worse than a drummer who doesn't thoroughly learn the songs, who doesn't really know what's coming next, and therefore can't lead the band. The thing is, you as the drummer, you're supposed to lead the band, not them lead you. You can't trust the vocalist to lead you through the song, because they, they might be relying on you to cue them into what's coming next. And so you gotta know the song really well. My personal philosophy with song learning as a drummer is you need to know the song better than anybody else in the band knows the song. That doesn't mean you need to know the chords better or know the riff better and know everybody else's parts better unless you're just a musical prodigy and you wanna to try to do that. But basically you need to know the flow of the song, the feel of the song, the dynamic changes throughout the song. You need to have a, an idea of, hey, what all's going on in this chorus? Who all's playing here? What all's going on in the bridge? What changes going into the bridge? Um, have, a, have just a good idea of what the guitar player is playing and what's happening. That way you can adjust accordingly. And so by knowing the song in that level of detail, you can make sure you're playing appropriately the whole way. Your job as the drummer is to transition the band from one part into the next with the fills you play. So that leads into our next point. A bad drummer habit is playing misleading or inappropriate fills. And so maybe you're dropping down after the bridge and you're playing like a ga -ga 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 -ga, like some kind of big fill that doesn't lead the band toward a lower dynamic. Or maybe things are building up, but you're not actually building enough. You're not cueing them into a big build like what needs to happen. So your job is to transition everyone from one part into the next. Your job as a drummer is to basically say chorus two, three, four, without saying chorus two, three, four. Say that with what you play. Say that with the fill that you play. Make your fill super clear and obvious. And because remember that fills serve a utilitarian function to transition the band. You've got to play a fill that leads them, that cues them into what's happening next. Don't play something messy and confusing that they can't follow. This is especially true if you're playing uh, in church, 
uh, or you're playing in any kind of cover band where maybe you're subbing or maybe you're playing with people who don't know you really well, you've got to be super clear and obvious in the way you play. Be easy to follow. Be the drummer who's easy to play with. Be the drummer who the bass player can follow, play along with easily, who the vocalist can follow and play along with easily. Don't make things difficult. Number two, refusing to make small tempo adjustments when the lead singer maybe pushes a little bit or lays back a little bit. So your job as a drummer is to make the vocalist comfortable, and if they're wanting to push something a little bit, you might need to go with them, or if they're wanting to lay back a little bit, you might need to lay back some. Now in a lot of scenarios, if you're playing to a click and you're playing with tracks, then you might not be able to. But that's where you've got to have a conversation with the band leader and with the singer and say, okay, look, our tempo here is 80 beats a minute, here with the click, if you're pushing here, do you want me to kill the click and go with you? Or do you want me to hold it down and hope that you're gonna get back with me? That's a conversation that you need to have. There needs to be some honest, straight communication there. I used to play with somebody who he told me, hey, if I rush, if I get off the click, kill the click. And so that's what we did. Even if we were playing with click and tracks, I would hit the space bar on my computer, kill it, and so I would follow him. And that way he was comfortable. He knew I was gonna follow him. He knew he could trust me. That's an important thing there, trusting the drummer. The band has got to trust the drummer. You've got to have their back. You've got to have the vocalist back. You've got to have the band leaders back, and you've got to have the goal of making them comfortable, helping them sound better so that they can be their very best. That's important, and that's a big difference between, I think, a, a good drummer and a great drummer. So along those lines, here's number one, stubbornly refusing to follow a vocalist mistake. So this is where we drummers have got to get over our ego and sometimes our, just our straight up arrogance with, look guys, I know the song. I learned the song. I know how this goes, so I'm going to hammer this out. We're going to the bridge here. I know that the vocalist is going to another chorus, but I'm going to the bridge. Sometimes we have that feeling that we can fix what the vocalist is doing. And we want to cue them. We want, remember, we want to play things obvious, cueing them into what's coming. But sometimes mistakes happen. Sometimes a vocalist is going to go somewhere else. And so you've got to be ready to adapt. Remember that it's not your job to be right. It's not your job to be right all the time. And this is tough. This is where we fight the ego thing. Because I told you, we've got to learn songs. A drummer needs to learn the songs really well. You've got to know the songs really well, but you've also got to be flexible. Know the songs so well that you can be flexible, so that you're not glued to a certain form, and you're not glued to a certain set of notes you were going to play. You've got to be listening. And that's really the important thing here. You've got to be listening. Be paying attention to that lead singer and what they're doing. Honestly, in almost every playing situation, if the drummer and the lead singer are gelling with each other, are listening to each other, it doesn't matter if the bass player is all over the place, it doesn't matter if the guitar player is on another planet. So many things could be going haywire on the gig, but if the drummer's listening to the singer, singer's listening to the drummer, then honestly, it's gonna be fine. Everybody's gonna get through it just fine and things are gonna gel because the drummer is going to follow the vocalist, the vocalist is going to listen for the drummer to cue them with obvious fills, and everything's going to be great. This leads to the big final thought I want to leave with you, the big overarching tip. This is a very strong personal belief of mine. Your job as a drummer is to make the band sound better. Do that, and all else will fall into place. So think back through all those points. Strive to make the band sound better, and honestly, everything else follows. Now just to get you thinking here, in order to do that really well, in order to have those goals and achieve those goals and be successful at making the band sound well, there are a few things you've got to do, and the big one is listening. You've got to listen, listen, listen. Always be listening. Always be in the moment, in the present moment. Don't worry about the mistake you made 10 seconds ago or 10 minutes ago. Be focused on where you're at now. How is everything sounding around you? Immerse yourself in what's happening. Don't worry about yourself and how you sound. Worry about how the band sounds, and you will naturally sound better. Now, in order to do that, you've got to have your playing together. You've got to have your coordination together. You can't be worrying about, is my right foot going to play what it's supposed to play? Am I going to mess up this fill because my left hand's forgetting how to work? You've got to have your playing together. From a technical standpoint, you've got to have the coordination happening. If you feel like that's where your struggle lies right now, I've got plenty of videos here on the channel about that for you to further your coordination. You've also got to know the songs really well. Spend time learning the songs. Spend time just listening through headphones, listening to the songs, mastering the songs, knowing how they go, being able to feel them out, and even memorizing them. And of course, that comes back to listening. You've got to be able to listen to the song really well when you learn it. That way you're feeling those dynamic changes. You know where the climax of the song is. You know what feels to play leading up to that and trailing off of that. 
if this is where you're at, if, you, if you've got your playing together, but you feel like your ear is a little bit lacking and you're not doing so well in these points of helping the band sound better, I've got a great free resource for you. And it's my PDF guide, five steps to learning any song in under 60 minutes. But the core of this method is teaching you how to listen, how to hear things you've never heard before in your favorite recordings, how to listen well, and how to apply that to actually playing and performing. We also dig into how to write a chart, how to chart a song and actually memorize it. So by going through this whole process, you learn to listen, you learn to get your thoughts on paper and write out the song on paper, and you get way faster at learning songs and it makes you a much better band player. So check that out, it's totally free. Five steps to learning any song in under 60 minutes without having to consult tutorials or drum tabs or any of that. The whole goal here is to be efficient and save you time. So that is all for today, everyone. Thanks so much for watching. If you're new to the channel and this video helped you out and provided you with some value, be sure to subscribe. Thanks, and I'll see you on the next video.